Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs, the second in our series on heat transfer. In our first video, we looked at the technique of heat transfer by conduction. So we're thinking about um, transferring thermal energy by direct contact uh, between particles. Okay. And we said, you know, e.g., um, metal spoon in hot tea. Okay, is one kind of example of this one. Okay, um, and then the second in our series, which is what we're going to focus on today, is this idea of convection. And then the third one, which will be the next video, is about thermal radiation. Okay, so convection is where we're going to spend our time today. Okay, so when we're thinking about convection, okay, I want you to picture, okay, a container, a beaker of water. Okay, so let's just kind of say, all right, so this is kind of, it's a thing of water, okay, that is blue, you can't really see it very well on the screen. Okay, so, and then let's say we put that beaker on a tripod over a Bunsen burner, okay, so there's our flame. A source of um, heating. Okay, remember heating being an action, being a verb, not a thing. Okay, so what what happens here? We've got our we've got our our flame, our source of energy, and what happens is that by conduction or by the direct transfer of that energy, that the particles, uh, some some of the water particles down the bottom here, are going to get um, their temperature is going to go up. They're going to get more thermal energy. And what we notice in a container like this is that these particles of water then start to rise up through the sample. So, um, so as it's heated, okay, it, we get to it starts to rise, okay, rise up through the container. Okay, what happens is that eventually it kind of reaches towards the top, or it gets further and further away. What happens is that then those water particles, kind of going around down this way, start to, they start to cool. That is, when we say use the word cool, as the opposite of heating, um, or it, so that is lose thermal energy. Okay, what then happens from there is that they start to sink down again. Okay, so if we could trace these water particles, then they kind of work their way back down the sides of the container in this kind of pattern, getting down towards the bottom. Okay, and what happens? So we've kind of, we trace them up here, and then around, and then down. Okay, and then they pick up some more thermal energy because of the flame going on, and then they'd start back up again. Okay, so we go around and down, and then this cycle continues. And we call it that this idea of heat transfer by convection. Okay, so it's transferring thermal energy by movement of particles from one place to another. E.g. hot water circulates in our beaker. Okay, so we see, let, let's see if I can kind of map this out a little bit. A little bit more step by step for you. Okay, so we gain thermal energy, that is we start to rise, and that is because we're less dense. Okay, then we start to cool, that is lose thermal energy, and so then it sinks, that is becomes more dense, it kind of goes back to its original density, that it, which is kind of relates to how, how much the particles are squished together or packed together in that substance. Okay, and then we wash, rinse, repeat, we kind of, the cycle can, in, in something like this, that the cycle can continue. Okay, so we can experience this in a number of different situations. So hot water circulating in a beaker, okay, and so we can think about hot air, this idea of, that we often refer to in everyday life of hot air rising, like in a hot air balloon, okay, is this idea of convection, that then when we heat up that gas, that it starts to rise up through the, the cooler air around it, making the hot air balloon lift off the ground. Okay, if you stopped heating that air, eventually it would cool down again and it would sink back down and that hot air balloon comes back to Earth. Okay, so that's heat transfer by convection. Thanks for watching.